probably with a notice of uh, containing the time to the limits what uh, my friend was discussing with me. Uh, definitely we will be sticking to that, but I will be making a scientific presentation rather than getting into the technology numbers, the engineering challenges and that, how it is carried out today. Well, the ocean of uh, sensors, you know that it is, it's, a, it's a large spectrum of sensors available ranging from the LK systems to metal measurements or even the pressure old uh, systems, conventional systems of sensor technology. The physical, the chemical domains, the biological domains, optical domains, emergence, <coughs> nanotechnology, and then hybrid systems. All together, I, actually of the tens of thousands of uh, sensors are available in different formats and in different engineering schemes. So we will be just looking into where are we going to, only to that much, rather than getting an analysis of the sensors and getting the state of the art sensors with the dimensions into the foray of our thoughts. So this is a spectrum of the modern sensors what we use. Some of them are at uh, dimensions of few nanometers, and some of them are in micro, and then some of them are in mm, and some of them are in uh, centimeter domain. And as I say there, we have to be at a very hot place. He was trying to tell that the plasma produced by the laser, and uh, there could be a feedback system by which certain controls can be applied over it. So I am too hot actually. So that means there are certain measurement challenges there. And then how to place it here? This is of the order of a five centimeter disc, and it has got a lot of instrumentation inside. I have to measure the temperature, I have to measure the pressure, I have to measure the theta dot of it. So how to achieve all these things? It's a challenge of the day. So this is the background over which people are working. This is actually the census, a variety show. Absolutely, the variety show, or those who are in the engineering and technology field, you know that from your career start onwards to sensors today, it has undergone a terrific transformation in dimensions, quality, and the way in which it is getting used. But the measurements remains to be there. Probably the range will be widening and the quality will be of higher, uh, uh, higher uh, levels. We cannot go on reading the whole thing, but electromechanical, inductive, photoelectric capacitive, an array of things for different types of the uh, physical parameters, the chemical properties, the biological properties. Even today, we would like to see the protein dynamics using some of the senses, what we can create out of the nanotechnology. And then the application strength. Very diverging applications are there challenging today. Every day, a new sensor or modified sensor is applied either to a consumer item or a professional equipment. You are uh, the, the laptops or your handheld devices or your mobile is going to have at least 50 sensors over a period of 10 years. So those sensors will be for the rate, they will be for acceleration, it can be for the direction, it can be for the thermal properties, it can be for your certain health parameters. It will be flooded with sensors, this is the planning what is going on. So it's not amazing that what sensors are doing the wonders in this world. So it indirectly improves the production and then manufacturing systems in the world. It helps transportation systems and the vehicles will be absolutely dynamically controlled in the future. And you can take the vehicle and drive without having much risk. So it will have accelerometers, rate gyros and pressure systems. All will be in the closed feedback loop with autonomous intelligence. Who is going to support the wonderful sensors which are yet to come or the ones which are on the way to come? And healthcare systems. In fact, about two, two weeks, I was in uh, the uh, famous uh, microelectronics center of uh, Singapore. They have devised, actually, of the order of about uh, 200 micron device, which could be put into the chest, and which is capable of communicating with the landlines or even the mobile phone, and then finally transmitting uh, the uh, signals taken from your chest and to the, uh, the doctor who will be observing of the order of 100 patients. So, sensors are doing wonders, actually. It's a cluster of sensors plus transmitting, processing, all these things together. And then, uh, generally, every facet of uh, automation and the control influencing the current state of uh, the humanity, actually, it is directly contributing wonders of the world. We, we never see the sensors. We see the wonderful effect what it creates. Your aircraft is flying stably. Your car is going to be uh, taking a banking successfully in a higher speed than what you can control. And at the same time, your food will be sensed whether it is absolutely correct 
free of bacteria or free of uh, any of the damaging things it could contain. And the air you breathe, you can say that, oh, this is not a good place to sit. It's better that I leave this place, you can get it right away from your mobile or from the watch uh, shortly. I, I, this shortly means of the order of few years. Conventional forms of sensor systems are, they are undergoing terrific transformation in the uh, manufacturing uh, front, better packaging for better reliability, environmental fitness and the cost. And then better instrumentation systems are coming with better signal deal, latest circuits, more integration through the semiconductor industries. So the th things are getting totally changed. Then better information processing. This is one of the clue which uh, is really revolutionizing the capability of the sensors, what is existing today and which is yet to come. The tunable filters, low cost implementation, and then uh, programmability to suit the systems. It will be, as in the next pages you will see, it is going to be autonomous and intelligent. What wonders it can do. Before the range goes up, it will be warning. Before, the, if, uh, before that itself is getting damaged, it can shut off the signal coming to it. So many wonders it can do because of the intelligence using the digital processing and the rest of the hybrid uh, or mixed cycle processing capabilities the sensors will achieve. And the unconventional systems are the wonders of the world today. Probably this may be the customary thing after 25 years. The biological sensor systems, so cell biological features, we are in a position to extract. The protein dynamics, we are in a position to extract and then find out the chemicals which are present in the air or even in your body or a locality wherever you want to look into. The protein chemical interactions also are in active uh, research so that I will be able to bring signals out of it. That means at a nano level, I will be able to detect things and I will be able to monitor things effectively and I can do measurements effectively. And uh, not only detection measurement also is actually the purpose of CAM. The nanotechnology, as you know, everybody talks about it. And what sensor talks about it? Let's have a look. The carbon nanotubes, the wonders are the most fascinating thing for every nanotechnologist. It has been widely tested for detecting many of the chemicals properly by doping. And not only that, uh, sensing the lowest level of the electrical signals and the charges. Sink oxide roads and shapes, they are of fascinating bodies which could be used for making even an artificial nose. So there is no sniffer dogs required in the future. I will have a sniffer dog or the hot dog head I will be having in my briefcase. Go there and put it there or take it in a robot or in a long arm. I can test my, uh, uh, the troubled area, whether it is containing any of the uh, explosive uh, molecules present in the air or even in the plastic. Polymer-based sensors for the liquids and chemical vapors, all these things are under heavy development. And then where are we going to have these wonderful sensors in which domain? This is not a frustrating design for you, only to show that those numbers what you see, can I deal it purely in nanometers? There I end my question and then I move to the next one. And then the rapid progress is in which domain it's all going to happen. In the miniaturization side, already have talked about it, large range of inputs. If I'm designing something for a few millivolts or microvolts, and uh, can, I, can I make the range widely operating because of the intelligence and the capabilities of the sensor self-adjustment techniques? It's only an example, but it, there are many modes in which it can operate. <coughs> Better signal from uh, the phenomenon, a phenomenon take place, how do I extract the best signal from that? Because this way in which sensor is going to interact the system, today the nano support can definitely engage into such uh, challenges and it can bring it up long life because of the best fit and the best package we can bring in and the less cost because of the multiple production capabilities and the cost of production, cost of materials and the speed with which what we can do. These uh, sensors are amazing and they will make wonders. So about uh, of the order of five billion sensors may be required immediately for your hands to be automated. It could be produced. Applications of more semiconductor intelligence, every sensor will be having a forefront. After the sensing, there will be a big intelligence going to work, which is going to be autonomous, taking decisions by itself, repairing by itself, calibrating by itself, resetting by itself, everything it will do, and then give the information what you want. And then wide spectrum applications, a set of sensor arrays I will be able to put, and all the things I can, I have shown you, a five centimeter disk in which I wanted to do many things in one place. And then SOC approach, 
systems on uh, chips approach for the arrays and for few uh, from few centimeters to few microns even the array systems can be compressed to deep. The sensor electronics is a wonderful area which I was talking. Actually, the signal processing methods and the advances in manufacturing technologies, they can integrate digital to fine-tuned uh, low-dimension sensors and uh, intelligence also integrated very close to that. It will come in the range of MEMS and may, it may go to nano domains also it, very soon. Things are under testing. So it will have wonderful capabilities, as I said, self-monitoring, calibrating, self-protecting, and self-repairing capabilities. And the nanosensors, it's a wonderful world. We cannot uh, just present in a minute. Nanosensors are finding its applications to a diverse field, healthcare, industry, environmental, military, biotechnology, engineered nanoscale materials from metal oxides, polymers, ceramics, and the novel carbon derivatives. These are all going to do uh, the, the, the property uh, substitution or the property uh, engagement with the systems what we see around our world. Today, numerous nano-enabled sensors designs are going on with respect to leak detection, environmental sensing, food quality, surveillance. These things are already in operation, actually. Real-time detection of the chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear hazards for military and anti-terror move. It's going to be heavily supported by these novel sensors which are on the shelf of the design, on the design table, I mean. The enormous uh, strides towards functionalizing the nanotubes, they are yielding a big result by which we will be able to sense biosystems properly and then multi analyte sensor arrays and they are going to be uh, doing wonders in uh, producing multiple results about different chemicals what's approaching my small surface. Even it can substitute the nose and uh, even for audio purposes it can substitute the ears also. And optical sensors will be replacing the eyes. Now, many nanosensor designs can detect multiple chemical species, already I told. Not only one chemical, you put something, it will identify all the things and tell you. It can lead to ultra-compact, low-power nanosensors with multifunction, which I happened to mention in my speech earlier. Miniaturization should support a host of applications, including handheld sets. It came automatically in my speech. The nanoscale, the thin film sensor side, is a byproduct of the whole operation. So a wide area collection of the uh, the properties of the environment or the metal or, or whichever uh, items we want to see, these are all going to be supported by this gold, platinum, diamond, titanium, iridium oxide, have nanoscale, the thin films for sensing abilities. It can be applied for the pressure, temperature, and that to the pattern, and then apply intelligence over it, and say that the way in which it is decaying. And even ultras, uh, ultrasound generators can be in the thin film, and it can go, and then fracture mechanics, on, on flight, fracture mechanics analysis also can be done. So things are going to be safe, and things are going to be wonderful, because of the intelligent feedback we are going to give to these wonderful sensors which are on the way. Since the arrays of nano cantilevers can be arranged in a single chip, take a small chip, maybe about five micron into five micron, then have about 1,000 or 10,000 cantilevers of nano fibers over it, I will be able to suck the air in, sniffing, and then it will pass through that and the rotating molecules of different uh, types, like uh, jackfruit is there far away, I'm able to smell with my nose. Not only with my nose, my artificial nose also will be detecting much earlier than what I can detect. Because of the molecular dynamics, I will be able to sense through the enzymes and the proteins which I can cut over the cantilever, or the cantilever itself will be interacting with the chemical molecules, active molecules which will be producing the static electrostatic uh, systems which I can extract through the excellent electronics in the mixed signal lines which are emerging to these guys. It can be used for multi-target detection. So the cantilevers can be used for uh, multiple applications <coughs> of the same things. There are several possibilities to apply uh, these developed materials, toxicity, suitability, and the stability of the results requires close. How to apply all these things? Can I go and apply it is a ethical question. Evaluations are going on to apply the biomedical and then the, the healthcare systems. A lot of watch has to be there. We cannot permit it easily, but things can come to your handheld systems and your household items, and then many of the things what you see in the manufacturing side. Sequential electrochemical reduction of metal ion to alumina templates, create a cylindrical road of metal section of 50 nanometer to 5 microns. 
nano barcodes can be created and I can use it for detecting the DNA. That means uh, it will be a too much a job, but at least to identify the man is the man whom you intend to. So I will be able to take a small thing and then I will put on him. Probably do a scratch like this, it will give the measurement and then uh, tell me that he is okay. <coughs> the identity crisis will be solved without photograph. Well, more for that in the physical sensors, the main nano balances. Can I, can I weigh off the order of one electron? Can I measure a charge much less than uh, probably the charge of an electron? These are all the demand of the uh, future. Electrometers, submicron mechanical electrometers consist of torsional mechanical resonator. Detection of electrode and then the gate electrode used to couple charge to mechanical element claims less than the charge of electron. It is detected and proven and uh, patent is going to be awarded. Chemical sensors and nano arrays incorporates capacity readout, cantilevers and electronics for signal analysis. So these are going to do wonders actually. Then electron transfer transduction approach to measure cantilever motion. So that means the mass which is hitting that, the smallest one, I will be able to measure. And uh, that will be the least measurement probably we can do it for the first quarter of the century. I don't believe these are the end of the road. Probably we may measure the Higgs boson also. Today it is only we are trying to detect in the Large Hadron Collider, but things can happen in a different way after uh, maybe 20, 30, 40 years. Optical technology in the Brax grating area, they are making wonders actually to sense the uh, structural properties and things like that. And the biosensors, very selective, sensitive uh, detection of broad range of biomolecules. Vertical carbon nanotubes are grown on silicon chip. It's possible today. DNA molecules attached at the end of the tubes detect specific type of DNA, as I told you sometimes back. The considerable work and better engineering for commercialization. What can we do to get this all around the world? All the, all the, uh, uh, the, the, the palm top applications, people are all behind it. Heavy, heavy search is going on, searching the patents, uh, negotiations are going on by which they will be acquiring some of the smallest sensors like, you know, iPhone has got the uh, direction sensor. Things will be full of sensors, whatever you are going to handle in the near future. Producing this spectrum of sensors for use, for the benefit of the humanity. Let these sensors come up in a wide spectrum, in uh, probably of the order of thousands of different, different types of sensors, and they all will help you to lead a better life and a very uh, comfortable life for the future because there will be more pollution, there will be more challenges of, of energy, and there will be more challenges of diseases, there will be more challenges of uh, uh, probably biomolecular invasions. Hope we will have enough protection around the sensors built in and the electronics what we are going to put in and the intelligence we are going to put in around these sensors which are going to do wonders of the future. Yes, thank you very much. My intention was to give only a cross-section view of what would happen rather than pumping the numbers. If you have any questions, uh, definitely. Thank you very much. Yeah, the phone is open for any discussion. Any questions? Yeah. So we are sure that the sensors will be, the world will be flooded with sensors very soon. And uh, so don't you think that this is a very scary scenario to remove all the sensors, <laughs> there is no privacy. And uh, the sensors reading the mind. Yeah, the actually, actually, you saw a blank uh, photograph. Sorry, a blank page coming before the thank you very much. I removed it at the last moment today morning. Actually, it is actually a header system. It's a wonderful uh, point what he has brought out. A system today it is advertised in California about three weeks back. He can put over it and he can sense or the system can sense the response to the advertisements. Today, the response to the advertisements on the TV is pressured by willingness. And we have to record and tell that I like this, I saw this program, so they are making statistical measurements. If some people are ready to use this one, they need not do any other work. They can carry on where they are working in the kitchen. Or I can read a book, uh, maybe uh, from uh, some of the well-known writers of today, as they like detective or even the novels. Okay, so at that time, I will be able to watch the advertisement and they will collect what response you have. 
So it's a, it's a dangerous attitude what uh, they are claiming. I don't know how far it is proven. I have the photographs and things like that. So encroaching the thoughts even, the censors can do as per the claim. It's not a proven. They say that they have got uh, statistically stable results by which the response to the advertisement is analyzed using applying it on 55 people in California inside. It's happening actually. And uh, the fundamental question what he has raised, I substantiated his question. And now my response to this is like this. Actually, the censors will be in void. Where you go, what you do, and how you are. Including the DNA test, I told you that. There is no meaning to go to Central uh, Laboratory of Hyderabad and then give it there, and after five days they will be giving It's all gone, actually. It can scratch, and then immediately it will analyze and check. So the identity is a crisis, and the privacy is a crisis, and uh, these things have to be. Uh, we have the crisis all through the evolution of humanity. Today we are encroaching much into the other people. When we were living apart 100 kilometers and nobody was in between, we had enormous privacy. So the privacy levels are coming into probably nanometer domain, and we have to have the uh, laws and regulations, actually. The legislation must be there to control all this. It should be used for the positive applications for the growth of humanity. Beyond that, it will be controlled under the legislation, hopefully. Uh, thank you, thank you, Dr. Nair. Thank you very much. And I, I hope there is no other question. If there is one, uh, there is time for that. But otherwise, uh, any uh, health hazards to human beings by nano? Uh, yes, uh, it has been reported that nanomaterials extensive use without uh, precaution it creates a lot of health hazard. Uh, repeated uh, doses are coming from the Japanese side more. Is it because they are not producing much of the nano sensors? I do not know. It's a, it's a commercial approach or it is coming and warnings are coming. Even the carbon nanotubes are not safe enough. But the thing is that uh, sensor domain manufacturers and then inventors and innovators, they were very, very clever. Actually, the, the sensors what we use, none of them are exposed to us. It will be sensing, but it's under encapsulation. I hope there will be means and methods by which the hazard uh, which may be produced by the nanoparticles and then the nano sensor system will be properly contained by engineering methods and it will be applied successfully to uh, serve the purpose rather than damage the environment. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kapalashnan. Uh, Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to hand over this moment to Dr. Nair.